1975, Italian symphonic rock band Apotheosi, which translates to Apothesis, released their singular self-titled album on said record. And from it, the three-part epic Il Grande Disumano Oratorio Atessa. despite being in 4-4. In, uh, four, four. What's that like clean little uh, like legato guitar uh, cocktail sounding that's just kind of noodling around in there? It, it's not very prominent or, or very... busy considering just how kind of muted and buried in the mix it is. I love that ooze right there. Yeah, this is like the, the, the ultimate earworm of the whole epic, that, that riff right there. guitar once again, the, the way it's just kind of like scaling around that ostinato. But that oozing sustain of the synthesizer, I, I, I don't think I've heard that, that sound from many Italian records from this time period. I'd have to I, I, I think I've heard that sound more like on the French, some of the French records from the time period. Okay, how many different movements have they had so far in this track? We're only three minutes in, and this is just part one of an epic, and are we on the like the sixth A B C D E F or something? That that's Italy for you from this time period. Um, in Italy, it seemed that their idea of the multi-part epic was to stop and start and kind of, or to start stop and start over again, like several times within within a given piece. About half the symphonic bands, anyway, particularly the bands that took after Bonco, and I'm hearing that influence quite quite heavily here. Uh, more so than the bands that took after PM, PFM, they, they tended to be a bit more about polished edges and, and, and such. <laughs> So far, 
I think the, the, the most dominant element of this whole entire track really is the r rhythm section. Like the, the, those, dr those rapid fire drum rolls and then the way the bass notes keep like doubling up on them and just the speed they keep uh, throwing in this. <laughs> right there yeah and the vocals well wow, quite um acidic <laughs> churchy here that sustained like church cathedral organ and, and choral vocals <laughs> producer and composer behind this band, um, Salvatore Ida, who put this out on, and a uh, said record is his label. Yeah. <laughs> brother sister act for the most part um let's see bass flute um frederico ida um <clears throat> keyboard synthesizer art arp synthesizer massimo ida um salvatore seems to take kind of like a behind the console uh like uh creative director role to this and then um Two non-related, um, Franco Vinci on guitar, vocals, I guess the, the male voice that we were hearing a bit earlier, and Marcelo Sarase on drums, yeah. <laughs> fire like kick drums and everything uh air spurts with those galloping sections and <laughs> Uh, 
um, like rhythm sections on the Italian scene. But uh, this band has got to be up there. I mean, um, out, particularly um, rhythm sections outside the uh, jazz rock uh, <clears throat> vein, like um, like the top of the heap being like uh, the players in Artie and the Ace Trey or Aria, some of those bands. But um, yeah, among like the symphonic rock bands of the, the period, this this band is is particularly strong in that department and just rapid fire and it's. Constantly dominating the whole uh, like musical interaction. <laughs> Okay, and it, but I also gotta say the guitarist is is quite impressive, particularly in this section, more so than than anywhere else. Um, even if the those um, now he's playing more kind of dirty, more well, more like distorted. Um, whereas in the uh, first uh, part, he had been really like clean, kind of. Given that kind of that hollow body um, cocktail sound out of the 1950s, bring, bringing it into this kind of music, which is not something you hear very often. Um, and uh, here he's he's really uh, quite uh, like fighting the rhythm section here, and just sparks are flying. <laughs> on the Italian scene like in the symphonic vein where, where everyone is just like playing notes so fast against one another yeah definitely um, I, I would say some of the influence of uh, jazz rock had rubbed off on, on this band yeah despite their their use of like choral elements that you wouldn't hear like on a on say a, a record by Perigio or for that matter Return Forever <laughs> Also, how everything's so clean in the mix. You, you have that like kind of like throbbing yet tight bass. The bass notes just like at rapid fire, rapid speed, and then while while the guitar is just kind of like, you know, uh, <clears throat> cutting right through it all. <laughs> Part three of the side two eight minute suite by Apoteosi. Um, yeah, Il Grande Disumano, Oratorio, Choral, and Atessa. Yeah, three. Um, the lyrics aren't pretty anywhere, so I don't really know what the what it's about. But the name of the band Apoteosi. Yeah, translates to apothesis. Yeah, which means the highest point in a career. And I guess for this band, this would be their apothesis because it was their only album. And um, I don't know what else these um, people did. Uh, yeah, I am going to assume... Huh. The same lineup in 1979 forms Trust Band, releasing a 7-inch single containing the cover version in Italian of I Just Want to Stop by Gino Vanelli. Aha, uh -huh, that's an interesting career twist. Um, I don't know. They don't... Oh, yeah. Okay, so they became... they record, So they recorded once more with that one 1979 single and uh yeah the the band um three bro three brothers and a sister hmm. okay yeah um so many of these bands just kind of came and went on the italian scene and you, you have a lot of great one-offs some of them who recorded 
two bands, and, and some of them just really um, hold their own, or in some ways, like, in some ways more interesting than the bands that, that recorded lots of albums, because you hear certain combinations that you just don't get to hear anywhere else, because they have, like, a unique way of uh, playing it. Like, this band was quite um, intense on the filigree, and had very good sonic separation for an Italian band of this period. Uh, exceptional tonal clarity in the instruments, and um, I thought that the comp, even though like um, the comp, even though like the the first part um, did change a lot, um, it never got boring. I, it it never um, there there have been moments in some of these Italian records where I thought that all the stops and starts were perhaps to distract from a lack of really solid ideas that could carry a song. Oh, if you're just changing every 30 seconds for the heck of it, um, it you know, it'll distract people from, say, the painful, obvious fact that they didn't really have a good solid theme to, to ride on and stick with for a few minutes. But um, I didn't get that feeling here. And, and the, the third track was really intense and, and, and powerful and the interplay solid um engaging and the second part uh had a good soothing quality to it and the contrast it presented yeah um yeah so apoteosi uh from their uh, 1975 self-titled album one of the finest italian albums of that year anyway and and um a really good one for anyone who is getting into uh like uh, symphonic rock from this country or from europe in general yeah one of um in my in my uh Top 10% of albums from 1975, and I've heard more than 1,250 albums from that year, so yeah, that's uh, no small comment. Yeah. For more Rubies and Sapphires from uh, this and other great Italian albums of the 70s and early 80s, see the directory of albums by Italian artists linked in the description below. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, share the video, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the epic, the three-parter that we just heard, the intensity, the interplay, the layers, the harmonics, the uh, counterpoint, the vocals, uh, the lyrics, if you understood them, the composition, the sequence of passages and such, and the tightness, the strength, strength and power of it all. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled, Tremaximist, signing off. <laughs>